The information in this video is based on published scientific research and open source literature. Further reading is recommended if remains any questions or confusions. Thanks for our forerunners. Following their footsteps, we can look beyond the shoulders of giants. In the first episode of discussing the chemistry of Amanita muscaria, I have mentioned the mechanism of how ibotenic acid transformed into muscimol under an acidic environment. I also emphasize the tautomer of both two compounds. In this second episode, I would like to give a literature review on the research of the following topic. First, what are the pathways to convert ibotenic acid into muscimol? Second, what is an appropriate condition for a high conversion rate? Before we get into the main discussion, here is a quick go through of all the literature I have studied. The published date of the literature is mostly from 1970s to 2018. Very few papers discuss the chemistry after 2018 due to the fact that this reaction is quite well known and well established. The earliest published work about Amanita muscaria can date back to late 1800. And here I am showing a paper published in 1900 which described the toxicity of Amanita muscaria together with Amanita verna, also known as disjoint angel, and Amanita phylloides, also known as descap. As what we know of today, toxins in Amanita muscaria shares no similarities than the other two. Therefore, you can see how primitive this content was then. After the invention and development of mass spectroscopy in 1960s, there was a paper published in Nature 1965 with the title Constituents of Amanita muscaria, which finally shed some light on the active compounds in this mushroom. Of course, nowadays we are asking questions such as, can mushrooms save our world in major publications and media? Because of this, I created a fake cover page of the Nature magazine to tease the current trend in mushroom pop culture. There are three Amanita mushrooms containing high amount of ibotenic acid. These Amanita mushrooms are Amanita muscaria, Amanita pansorina, and Amanita rigatis, which is more prevalent in European continent. In 1995, a group of scientists in Switzerland published a paper and disclosed the concentration of ibotenic acid in these three mushrooms collected at different locations in Europe. As you can see, that Amanita regalis has the highest content of ibotenic acid, almost three times higher than in Amanita muscaria. Concentration of ibotenic acid is moderate in Amanita pensarina. In the meantime, some other research groups investigated the concentration of ibotenic acid in the spores or in the fresh caps of Amanita muscaria. The content of ibotenic acid is much higher in the caps than in the mushroom spores. Both muscimol and ibotenic acid coexist in the Amanita muscaria mushroom, and you can find evidence in the paper published in 2007 by Japanese researchers. I replot the data based on the discussion and you can clearly see the different concentration of ibotenic acid in three Amanita mushrooms. Amanita regalis is obviously the king and the winner. Now let's talk about the research on converting ibotenic acid to muscimol. In 1985, researchers from Denmark started the conversion of excitatory, in other words psychoactive, ibotenic acid and its derivatives into muscimol derivatives after decarboxylation. They generated a figure which particularly demonstrate the concentration change of ibotenic acid and muscimol respectively at different pH under a certain period of time. This figure was one of the first figures which discussed such transition. It shows that at low pH, at pH 2.7, ibotenic acid converted almost 95% into muscimol. At neutral pH, pH 7.4, only 20% of ibotenic acid is converted into 20% of muscimol. However, at high pH, pH 10, even though more than 50% ibotenic acid is converted, the generation of muscimol is not in accordance. Only 20% of muscimol is detected. It is important to mention that the whole experiment was carried under boiling temperature of water at 100 Celsius. 
Even though I may have some ideas on the low conversion rate at both neutral and basic pH, I am not going to elaborate because it's not the focus here. You may think this figure is too difficult to interpret. To ease your mind, I have replotted this figure using modern data software. Just imagine each curve move along as a function of time. Following the first work in 1985, some Japanese researchers investigate the effect of sunlight on the conversion in 1993. In their work, they found out that sunlight did induce a conversion. However, the conversion was not proportional after long hours of exposure. Instead of a high yield, which is supposed to be getting at 11 days of sunlight, the yield of muscimol was actually higher than if the mushroom is exposed for three days. By heating the mushroom, also did not generate a high yield. They also performed similar experiments done by Denmark researchers. They cooked the mushroom in boiling water and studied the conversion of ibotenic acid to muscimol at different pH. The results were comparable, so I will not discuss in detail. If you are interested, you can check the literature online with a link in the description below. Things are getting more interesting after year 2000. There was a group in the renowned diagnostic company Pelkin Emmer continued to investigate the conversion of ibotenic acid to muscimol based on the 1985 work done by Danish researchers. In the form of a short communication, the research group in Pelkin Emmer unexpectedly, in their words, a surprising observation. Found out that in the presence of deuterated water or tritiated water mediated by dimethyl sulfoxide, the conversion rate can reach up to more than 90% at room temperature. I plot the data based on the description in their paper. How marvelous it is! Who does not want to have a high yield of muscimol if the reaction can be carried in an ambient environment? Following this work, 12 years later, in the year of 2018, the same corresponding author, Chris Filer, wrote a paper discussing the possible mechanism of conversion with the assistance of treated water. He hinted that the clue could be found in a paper published in 1978 named "Crapco Decarboxylation in the Presence of Dimethyl Sulfoxide." In the year 2014, there emerged a patent published by author Trent Austin on the conversion of ibotenic acid to muscimol using biochemical fermentation technique. Indeed, previously mentioned methodologies are all via chemical reagent-mediated synthesis. As a matter of fact, enzymatic reaction is omnipresent. Using naturally occurred decarboxylase is much more efficient and milder. As disclosed in the patent, when incubated mushroom with Lactobacillus bacteria, there is a high conversion rate, which is above 92%. This is due to the presence of decarboxylation enzyme glutamate decarboxylase during the fermentation. Interestingly, after the fermentation, the pH of the culturing media dropped to pH 3 to pH 4 as a result of the secretion of lactic acid. The figure here indicates a control experiment was done when treating the mushroom substrate with hydrochloric acid and boil at 100 Celsius. The conversion rate is still decent, around 50%, but far more less efficient than the biological enzymatic process. The untreated sample only had a 0.29% conversion, which is intuitive and expected. Let's wrap up the video with all the animated figures previously discussed, and hope you like the recapitulation of these important works. For the next and last episode, I will give some brief discussion, remarks, and conclude all this research mentioned in the video. Please stay tuned.
If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe. Your support will help to spread the knowledge of mushrooms and maybe to inspire people to build a better world. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.